Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you want to insert a control into a form where users can enter responses, you must first click into the place within the form where you want to insert the control. Then click the desired control button within the controls group on the developer tab within the ribbon that corresponds to the type of control that you want to insert. Now once you've inserted the control, you can then select it to edit its properties. To set the properties of a control, just click the control to select it. Note that to completely select the entire control, you can click the small handle that appears in the upper left corner of the control when you roll your mouse pointer over the control within the form. You can then click the Properties button in the Controls group on the Developer tab. That will open the Content Control Properties dialog box where you can set the available properties for the selected control. Note that the properties that are available to change will vary depending upon the type of control that is selected. For all controls, some of the properties will remain constant. The properties that are available in the general and locking sections are the same for each type of control. Let's examine the properties that are shared by all controls and then look at the properties that are specific to only a particular control. In the general section, you can enter a title for the control into the title text box. The title will display in the small tag in the upper left corner of the control in the form. Now if you want to surround the control with a tag, then enter the name of the tag into the tag text box. Also for any control except the picture content control, you can check the Use a Style to Format Contents checkbox in order to choose a word style to apply to the contents of the control. If you check this checkbox, then you will need to select the name of the style to apply from the Style dropdown. In the Locking section, you can set the level of protection to apply to the selected control. If you want to protect the individual elements in your form, you can check either or both of the checkboxes that are available in this section to apply security to the control. The choices are Content Control Cannot Be Deleted and Contents Cannot Be Edited. So now that we've reviewed the shared properties of the controls, let's examine the specific properties that you can set for controls. Now if you have a rich text control selected, then in the Rich Text Properties section of the Content Control Properties dialog box, you will see the option to remove the content control when the contents are edited. If you check this box, then the control itself will be replaced by the contents that the user enters into the control once it is used within a form. Now this contrasts with the default method of replacing the content of the control with new content. Note that this is also an option in the Plain Text Properties section if you have a Plain Text control selected. Now in addition, you have the Allow Carriage Returns multiple paragraphs option available in the plain text properties section for plain text controls. Now if checked, this allows for multiple paragraphs to be entered into the plain text control when it's used in a form. Now if you have a drop down list or a combo box selected, then you will see a list of possible choices for the control appear in the drop down list properties section of the content control properties dialog box. To add a choice to this list, click the add button to open the add choice dialog box. Here you'll enter the value to display in the list into the display name text box. You can then enter an actual value to use if different in the value text box and then click the OK button to add it to the list. To modify an entry that you made into the list, you can select the choice that you want to modify and then click the Modify button in order to open the Modify Choice dialog box. And here you can edit either the display name or value fields 
and then click the OK button to finish editing. You can remove a choice that you've added by selecting the choice from the list and then clicking the Remove button. You can rearrange the order of the choices presented in the list by selecting the choice that you want to move and then clicking either the Move Up or Move Down button as appropriate. If you have a date picker selected, then you will see a listing of the possible display formats of the date and time that are available in the Date Picker Properties section of the Content Control Properties dialog box. And here you can select a date format from the choices shown in the scrollable list. If needed, you can also set the locale and calendar type by using the drop downs available. You also have a choice as to how you want the XML data to be stored in the Store XML Contents in the following format when mapped drop down. And here you can select what format you want the stored data to have if needed. Now, if you have a building block, selected. Then you'll see additional properties in the Document Building Block Properties section in the Content Control Properties dialog box. Here you can select which gallery of building blocks you would like to have available from the gallery dropdown. If desired, you can further refine the selection by choosing a category from the Category dropdown. Now once you've set the properties for all the controls that you've inserted as you would like, then all you need to do is just click the OK button in the Properties dialog box in order to apply the selected properties to the control. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.